they're not even going to be able to see that on the cam. See my Bentley mask, and I'm just adjusting my seat. Nice, Do a little adjusting, perfect. Um, Michael B, dude, I think after right, I've always loved your work. Well, always, thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, but now, after watching you work for the last two days in the studio, you might be my favourite artist. Damn. What a way, I'm what already a way blushing. To, We're just getting yeah. started. <laughs> I know. There's probably no response to that. You might even feel a little bit weirded out. No, no. Dude. I appreciate the honesty. You know what? And I also had some feelings about you because, damn, weird accent, everything. But, you know, you turn out to be quite a nice guy. <laughs> Who would have known? Do you think my accent's weird? Yeah. But, but, but you know what? I think that's why I like you because my accent is pretty weird, too. Yeah, I suppose so. But it's, I, I like both of our accents. Yeah. And it works, I think, for us. And yesterday when you were recording your voiceover <laughs> oh, yeah. for, the, for the art film, the reason that you're here, the Bentley Art in Motion um, art films that we're making, dude, it was working. It sounds epic. And you know what? When I first moved to Los Angeles, it was... No, I really liked networking and meeting new people. It was kind of like an icebreaker. So when I met people and I started to talking and they would be like, wow, where are you from, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm from Denmark, you know, and now I live in Los Angeles and so on, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, only helped me over here. Yeah, right. Sure. But when you, like, did you have, like, English as a second language? Because I was like, when I've been to, um, like, Sweden and Denmark, and I know that Malmo is kind of close to Copenhagen, right? Yeah. They're not that far away. But... Um, there would be people that kind of sounded like you. Yeah, you know, like you speak well, but you, you've definitely got an accent. But then there'd be other people. And I, I was like, this person's American. And they'd be like, no, no, I'm not American. I'm Swedish. And I'd be like, your, your accent sounds like American. And they were like, it's MTV, it's movies. It's just like yeah, yeah. American culture. Yeah. It's, a, but it's like a big, a big thing over there, right? Yeah, for sure. I, I always been like looking up to the states and you know in school you would start learning English like very early on yeah you know so it's hard to meet somebody on the streets in Denmark that and I also think that's why we they say like one of the happiest countries in the world that like, we always so welcoming to foreigners uh, most of us be speak English you know and stuff like that that's also what I hear over here like oh we love Denmark you know it's you're so happy all of you are so happy yeah we were talking <laughs> yeah, we about are. that we were talking about that yesterday Los yeah. Angeles is, is a happy place isn't it yeah. we were talking about Los Angeles versus like maybe New York where if you are networking um, people here can be a lot more receptive to like oh <laughs> who are you? What you you know what do you do yeah. talk about yourself and in New York and in London people can be a little bit more kind of skeptical a little bit more like hmm. maybe money their own business a little more i don't know yeah yeah but, but so look gr graffiti is like a massive you're, you're, like influence in your work right and i you know watching the piece that you just made in the last two days you definitely get like a graffiti a, a sense of graffiti coming through how did that come about in copenhagen um was that part of like you know U.S. culture being being so big, the music and the art, graffiti art, like how how did that get started for you? Yeah, I always been like drawing since I could hold a pen, you know, and I con continue to um, to draw as I grew older. And then when I was in, like 15, 16 years old, it was natural for me to to grab a spray can and try to experiment with that as well. And, and why did I grab a spray can? That's because I was super inspired by all the graffiti going on in, in the streets, on the trains, like it was everywhere. And the whole hip hop culture was like exploding in Denmark in the mid eighties and in the nineties. And I even started like break dancing, you know, and listen to like NWA, Dial the Peoples, all this stuff. Um, and graffiti was what stuck with me and I found like my alter ego cats like my graffiti name developed a, a, like a wild uh, style letter um, style that and I'm this day 20 years after I'm like I'm I'm still loving graffiti it's my roots and I I still go out and paint 
paint graffiti when I when I get a moment to do it. Yeah, that's amazing, man. And so when you the graffiti you were influenced by that wasn't like magazines and like you know um, that that wasn't like imported from the U.S. That was the Copenhagen graffiti scene. Yeah, because like you know the late '90s when I really started getting into graffiti, I was you know there was the internet was not a really a thing <laughs> you know yeah of so, course so it was like i would buy like magazines i remember like this big magazine called Ma- called uh, magic moments i would go to like the store and buy the magazine um and uh, see i would also be like international artist but mostly it was focused on um like swedish danish uh, european artists uh, a lot of artists from germany as well um and i was just like i i want to paint and in copenhagen we had the copenhagen uh, hall of fame where all the big, well-known graffiti writers would be. There would be like meeting of styles and events there. And I was like, how can I go and paint there? And then one day I borrowed my parents' car because I lived like one hour from Copenhagen, drew all the way in there, couldn't really find it. Uh, it took me like hours to find it. I finally found it. It was like, it was like a museum of graffiti, huge, like miles of walls with with all the the graffiti that you have seen in the magazine mm. just is like almost starstruck however i um i picked up the can and then i found like a, a spot for me and that was my first wall i never forget my first wall it's, it was 20 years ago but i remember it like yesterday have you got a photo i have a photo yeah yeah mate it's always tough trying to um did you know, like, f- f- early on that you cannot, <laughs> you can't go over someone else? Yeah. You know, you have to find your little spot, which can be tough. I think from day one, I was just obsessed with the graffiti world. So also did what I could to, like, network with people, understand, like, the subculture and everything. Um, and I think th- that is uh, how I, I'm always working when, when I do something, I usually just get obsessed about it and I want to learn everything about it. Um, I'm still today, I'm, I'm always eager to learn more. I consider myself as a, a lifetime student and I want to be, you know, the best version or at least pursuing the best version of myself every day. Yeah, mate, you can tell, to be honest, I was taught like, you know, standing next to you watching you finish up uh, your piece for this project and you know, dude, I, I came up with, I mean, it, just like you, um, art was something, it was the first thing I was into from a baby, from a, you know, really small kid. But graffiti came in early. So, you know, I'm pretty familiar with the skill of spray painting. And the, I was telling you that, you, you know, your fades, those, those gradient backgrounds that go, for, you know, that they're perfect. They're perfect. And, and that is not easy. And you can tell that you have like a kind of obsessive, um, like studied kind of approach to it because a lot of what you do um, technically is, for me, it's like, it's really difficult to execute what you do properly um, with those fades, those gradients, the, you know, knowing what a color, if you're, if you're creating like a diamond or a prism or, or a geometric 3D shape, knowing how that color will refract and change as it goes round the shape or even change color, you know, with, with new light. That's really difficult to do. And you do it so well. And again, I don't even think there's a question in here, mate. I'm just, um, <laughs> I'm just giving you props. But um, I mean, let's make it into a question. So when, in, in terms of art, how do you think that came about? Like for me, I don't really know. Like my dad is kind of creative. But I don't really know why I gravitated towards art so early. I can't really remember. Like, do you, do you, you know, did someone teach you? I know yesterday we had talked about you uh, spray painting in, in your back garden. So, yeah. like, are your parents creative? Did they, you know, were they encouraging? Like, like how, how do you think it kind of started? Yeah, like my parents are, n- are not, like, in the creative world um, at all, uh, but... They always like supported me because they could see that I wanted to do spray painting. Okay, um, they want to like you put up some like wood panels in the backyard so I could express myself. And um, so it it's it's interesting because I want to tell you just like a very short story because a couple of months ago. Um, 
when the gyms is even like longer than because back when the gyms were open, uh, which is a while long ago, time ago. Um, this guy he walks up to me and he say, "So, um, what do you do for a living?" You know, and then it's like, "I'm an artist," and he's like, "Damn, you're lucky." As if I was given like magical powers out of nowhere, and if somebody said to me when I was born, Michael. You are gonna become a great artist. Here you go. You have the skills and everything. But the truth is, nobody did that. Nobody told me never. You're gonna become an artist. I found out. I have to find out myself. And I've been through so much um, for the first 30 years of my life because now I'm 36. But it wasn't until I was 30 years old that I actually took the decision and took the leap of faith to jump into my art career and spend all my time focusing on creating my art. Wow. So it's been like a journey of 30 years trying all kind of stuff, experimenting, and I never been afraid, you know, to seek out of my comfort zone and I think that's been like a huge thing and very important thing because nobody is born with a passion. You you have to find that. It's just and that that's what I'm re- referring to like and so you have to be be willing to do like face your fears, get get out of your own way, sort of. And I've been doing so much stuff, getting so many like hits in my face, but I got up every time, and I believe that it was just l- learning every time. So, um, so yeah, that that's been like kind of my my journey. I've been had like been delivering newspapers when I was a young boy. <laughs> I've been like cleaning stuff. I've been doing all kind of like shitty jobs. I ran a design agency in Copenhagen with my brother and a friend for like six years. Um, and then finally I could, there was something inside me that needed to get out. And then, and then it, it led to another thing and another thing. And then um, in moving to LA was, I think, the best decision I, I ever made because it kind of like set me free at least creatively I feel I feel like Los Angeles gave me like wings I could fly over here creatively yeah uh, well, I feel that too from moving here so did you it was the same time that you moved to Los Angeles that you kind of decided I'm gonna be like a, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna create art full-time was that both around six years ago yeah um, I just made the decision to sell the the design agency I created with my brother. We built that for six years, and mm. then suddenly I felt trapped, identity crisis, like, and that's a whole nother story. But I was <laughs> fighting with all that, like, who am I? Yeah. W- what? W- how should I make a living? Can I make a living off my art? I don't know. And and I got off to a very good start of my art career in in Denmark with a, a couple of very successful pieces that. Uh, went uh, viral um, but before I was even established or anything I was like okay I want to take this to the States um, and yeah people thought it was crazy everybody around me thought it was wow that's shouldn't you like create your career in Denmark first maybe and um, but I was I think I just made up my mind you know so yeah, yeah. you just moved out here right you, like, I did you, you didn't come with anyone no I didn't and, and you I, didn't have we were talking about this you didn't have anyone like waiting here for you you didn't have um you know clients saying just you you know we want to commission you for like two or three pieces you just were like nah i think i need to be in los angeles yeah dude that's brave i know but but you know um you a lot of times in life you're rewarded for that kind of bravery and i'm really (laughs) you but you are right because i think you know, sometimes people just don't make those kinds of decisions because they're scared of the outcome and that, you know, the uncertainty is probably a bit too overwhelming. But in recent years, I've always just thought that, well, look, everything's uncertain, you know, so you may as well just kind of wander off (laughs) into the darkness and see what happens. Yeah, but I I think I I came to LA um, with some, I didn't consider myself as like a, oh yeah I'm the best artist or anything but I I knew one thing I might be the hardest working I had a great deal of work ethic and discipline almost a discipline that um, yeah I would see I could outwork everybody any day you know um, that, Co- that Kobe Bryant a- yeah, attitude that that's 
how obsessed I, I am. Well, that, that, that's, and I also made a promise to myself that, that I wouldn't give up for any price. I was ready to live on the streets, which I almost did over here uh, when I first got started. Uh, it was like, it was pretty bad, you know, the, 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 the first couple of years. And then suddenly st stuff started to happen. I got some commissions, I got some good clients, you know, and, and then I worked even harder and even harder to build momentum. Um, and suddenly the snowball was rolling and I just kept going. What was your um, mind state like when it, <clears throat> when it kind of wasn't happening? Do you know what I mean? You said like you almost didn't have enough money to kind of pay your rent. Yeah. So like, what was your mind state there? Were you panicking or like, I mean, I think I might know the answer. Was there a little bit inside of you that was like, just keep going, like, you know? It's funny because not at any moment I, I, I had no doubt that I would succeed. I didn't know it, but I didn't doubt it, you know, and it was that doubt that uh, uh, not having that doubt instead of I could keep like a calm mind. Um, and I think that was, I think I'm just very, very optimistic. Like I stay positive no matter what. <laughs> and and people will, will laugh at me when everything seems impossible. I will see I will still keep my head up and I think that is what carried me through when it everything just looked impossible I'm just like at some point I was thinking what am I doing and, and <laughs> I would have an inner voice you're following your passion yeah and and keep going you know I, I had that inner voice and I was also and I, I think I had a I did um, I practice a technique called um, uh, mental rehearsal, where you flood yourself with the feeling of a future accomplishment. And it's like law of attraction as well, um, the energy that you put out in, into the universe. Um, totally believe in that. And all the biggest accomplishments I ever had in my life, I, I saw in my mind wow. like months, even years prior to that event. And I would see it over and over again. I would see this big solo show, sold out a lot of people, thousands of people in line, like the work tank, everything over and over again. And, and I will go back into my friend's garage, do the painting, get back into the studio apartment. I was sharing with a guy that I didn't know. And you know, all, all this stuff in the wow. bad end of Hollywood, our, the studio in the backyard of uh, Koreatown would, 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 would holes in a wall for like uh, gang members shooting, you know, all this stuff would happen in that area. And but every day, every night, you know, repeating that. And you know what? In 2016, that happened, and that was a huge breakthrough f for me. And um, then I think bigger and bigger. Do you still do that now? I do. Yeah, because you know what? I completely. Um, it's not even. I don't want to say I buy into it because it's something that I firmly believe um, is part of reality you know in the same way the way I always describe it is like if you want to have a bad day <laughs> if you want to go out and have a bad day you can totally do that if you want to wake up angry and you want to walk down the street angry you can have a bad day you know you can get in to an altercation with someone like that is not hard because you're you, you know and I I've done that I've had a bad day and, I've, and, and I can tell that I'm kind of deciding yeah. I'm going to be grumpy or I'm going to be short with people you know because I'm having a bad day and sure enough, you're seeing it in your mind before it happens, you have that bad day. So in the same way, and it's a 100% it's a reoccurring theme with, um, you know, successful people. And I don't just mean like successful in, in, in making money or being creative, spiritually successful. You know, it's a reoccurring theme that a lot of people will talk about kind of uh, positive affirmations. Yeah. And I do it as well. And I've always had success with it. But the thing is, is I... I am quite a, a, an erratic thinker. So I'll get into a, a, what I would consider a great habit like that. Like I'd always email myself at the start of each day. I'll email myself and, you know, just reinforce yeah, yeah. like the kind of the, the, the way that I want my life to be. And it's not always just like, you know, make loads of money. <laughs> It'll be like eat healthy, you know, like nourish my body, yep. exercise my body, meditate, all these things, encourage myself. But then I'll forget, dude. But, you know, you can see that with you, it sounds like that is just like it's a, it's a habit for life. Yeah, but, you know, lasting 
uh, change takes time. It takes a lot of time. And, and how do you break like your, your patterns? How do you break your, like, your way of thinking? Um, and I wanted to start a new habit um, just like a while ago, like maybe a year ago, because I know how much gratitude can change your life. Because no matter how bad things get, uh, there's always something to be grateful for. And it's the number one um, way to rewire your brain and get in a, in a positive state of mind is to be thankful. Uh, so by saying thank you for some specific things when you go to bed and when you wake up, I wanted to implement that. So I bought a whiteboard and I placed it next to my bed and I was just writing down, say thank you every morning and every night. So I was looking at that thank you. First thing when I wake up, first thing when I go to bed and it's just like, now it's just like a, a part of that. And um, because I believe when you, when, when life hits you in the face and there are some, you, some situations where that you're so negative about, you can instantly change that situation by changing your mindset, your perspective on that, is it, is it a setback or is it a setup? That's up to you. You you decide that. Yeah. No, that's n nice. I agree with that completely. And um, I also think as well, just having that attitude of I was going to say attitude of gratitude. <laughs> that's that was a mistake. That was that's a bit corny. Um, but I agree. And I I was just talking to Terry, Secret Rules CEO, outside and you know, talking about like the state of the world, um, which can get you down or can get people down, get myself down. But um, one thing, I, I think I read it in like an Eckhart Tolle book um, where he's kind of talking about, um, you know, like being present and having gratitude for the present moment. And, you know, a lot of times when people can't sleep, for example, you're rolling around in your bed, yeah, and you mm. can't sleep. It isn't because there's like a maniac in your room. You know, there's no one in your room. You know, you're comfortable. The, the, the temperature's just right. You know what I mean? You're, you're cozy, you're in sheets, like you're yeah. safe. You've, you've got a roof over your head. And obviously, you know, not everyone does all the time. But if that is the case, there is a lot to be grateful for just then. And I think that's really important, man, because, you know, it's maybe part of the, like a big feature of the human mind that it's so easy to wander down into like a negative place of, of what happened yesterday or last week or what might happen in the future or what's happening globally um, that you can forget to just be like, as you do, you know, grab a whiteboard, grab a pen and write down like all the things that you can be grateful for mm. then and there. So it's, it's, it's awesome, man. Really, really awesome. But you're also meditating. Dude, uh, same same way though. Uh, you yeah, know, as but I do you like practice mindfulness or w what kind of like meditating are you into? Yeah. So again, I'm erratic with it. I'll get into a good habit, and then the only thing recently that I really really stuck with was the gym. And as soon as that shut, but as I was telling you, as soon as the gym <laughs> closed, dude, my my exercising sh shut down the last six months or however long COVID's had the gym shut. It sh it shut down. But so you know, we know what I admire about you or about you that you are so honest about it yeah because a lot of people they wouldn't even have the honesty or like the the insight of the, the looking like take like the inward journey and that guts that it's that to deal with that and say hey man i i, I don't i i stopped working out because the gym you know it yeah. still takes some courage you know to say that you know yeah, mate, i appreciate I, that I, I love that you know to be honest michael and, and, and that honesty you can use yeah you know yeah well, I was going to say, to be honest, I don't think I can hide the fact that, <laughs> that I've been skipping. <laughs> you the look gym. good. You look good. Thank you, bro. I appreciate <laughs> that. You too. But meditation. So the 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 meditation I've had the most success with that I love um, is I can't remember like what people would kind of how, how they would uh, title this type of meditation, but it's um, it's like a body meditation, guided meditation, where you're you're basically feeling or trying to feel the the energy that's circulating around in your own body right so it's like how can i feel if i close my eyes how can i feel that my hand is here without touching anything you know and if you do that you can you know you can close your eyes and you can sense that you've got a hand you can mm. sense the energy so the the you know that's like how you kind of enter into the um 
uh, like the kind of thought process or the feeling process of this meditation but then simply with a bit of nice music on dude it's just move you know just being aware of your toes being aware of your feet being aware of your lower legs your kneecaps you know going up and relaxing each part of your body yeah. being aware of your face um and i got so into that that type of meditation where i was kind of fo- it was you know i was um wasn't worried about my thinking or anything like that i was just purely focused on energy in my body um but again i go through phases with it so do you meditate yeah i do what what do you like what do you do i i have a daily routine that i call a two minute vacation how do you have these daily routines mate you've got your, your your gratitude morning evening your affirmations your meditations i know you work out as well and you're you're painting like that <laughs> yeah you, you know because i do all that i can like be at it non-stop i i can perform at an extremely high level without getting stressed yeah. because i do all the things around it so i can yeah people even sometimes call me like a machine you know yeah. i can just keep going but also keep my mind and my body extremely healthy or else i wouldn't be able to and um to sit out just like one or two minutes and just close your eyes and concentrate on the breathing and uh bring your attention to the present moment that's like very simple what uh, mindfulness is about it's just like rewire me just like right away and just like fuck yeah i'm ready everybody everything can just i bring it you know yeah. bring it i'm I'm ready you know yeah if i get nervous or something if is this because i have so so many worries uh all the time you know and that will make me over prepare over plan you know and um but it really helps me set my my mind straight eating healthy doing like but you eat healthy but you also w- want to keep your your mind healthy what kind of information do we put in your mind you read the right books you listen to the right podcast and and stuff like that yeah that's amazing and i I subscribe to that i don't always live by it but i think it's true you because because here's the thing you i imagine this is why you stopped like with the design studio and you've moved into like making your own artwork because now you know and it's amazing that you've maneuvered yourself into this point you just like with this project you know awesome brands are are looking Mm. to you and being like michael we want to work with you um here's what we're trying to do what's the idea and just letting you do your thing yeah. versus maybe you know a few years ago if you're in the design studio i know what those types of environments can be like mm. and, and you're reacting constantly to what other people want and you're trying to yeah. bend and, and mold yourself to what other people want yeah that can be stressful yeah. but even then i can see from the last two days watching you you are like a machine but everything you're doing whether it's um painting these pieces or listening to music or exercise exercising your body and mind they're all nourishing so i imagine that the more you're doing it the more energy you're just creating anyway yeah. you know <laughs> you by by doing your paintings you're exercising your creativity you know yeah. by meditating and reading the right books you're exercising mm. your mm. mind and then the physical stuff is is exercising your body yeah so it's true man the only times i feel tired is when i'm doing stressful stuff um but when i'm creating stuff like this project ha- is is intense you know there is a lot to do but i haven't felt stressed at any point yeah. uh, you, you know honestly because i'm working with great artists my own great team a great client great agencies like everyone's great it's so creative it's, you know it's like 16 hour days fine it's easy you know let's get it done let's let's make the best product we can again mate no question in there <laughs> love it no no but i think it sounds like you're really good at even though that things can can really suck you you can really enjoy it like because no matter how fantastic your job is or what is you doing there's always like things there's like i don't want to do that but if you can really get to enjoy the the stuff that you didn't like find joy in that um and do um do all the the things that are hard do the things that are tough then lives become like way easier and you will build so much resilience you you will build like this uh, like callousness so so nothing can get to you um i think that's that's super important and it just sounds like you are just in the zone of that you know yeah like you just you don't get tired you just like 
Th- that's it. That's that, because you love what you do. Because you know? I love what I do. And I think what you said super important. It's like if you can develop and it is more gratitude i think that those those things that you might you wake up and you might not want to do because they're not going to be the best part of your yeah. day having the gratitude to realize that those moments um can often be the foundation for the great things yeah. that you're going to do so the two are one do you know what i mean those are necessary i think is what keeps me going because it can't as you know as you were kind of alluding to it can't just all be like the greatest thing ever you know yeah. a little bit of hard work makes the end reward yeah. greater exactly right knowing knowing if you're making a film or making a piece of art knowing the kind of you know the the hours days weeks years maybe that have gone into this the tough moments that makes when you like look back at that finished thing and that, see, that see what make, you've uh, achieved it, and a quick example of that could be Uh, nobody likes to take out the trash and they'll be like oh it's always me I have to get out the trash that's that's one perspective the other pers- perspective could be I get to take out the trash that means that maybe I I have things to eat I get uh, maybe some exciting packages from online whatever that collected all the, that got all, 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 that's what the trash is coming from right yeah and I'll I get it. to take it out you know Th- that's like two perspectives instead of oh I have to do it or i get to do it. I'm going to be the best taker out uh, of the trash. Yeah, you're going to enjoy ever. it from now on. And I'm going to trash me. Yeah. I'm going to take it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to put it in the trash can perfectly. <laughs> so the trash man looks at that and he's like, yeah. whoever positioned that bin is a legend. Yeah, man. Um, dude, that. I just really wanted to quickly talk a little more about your trip to Alaska. Yeah. Just as a final little um topic because i just thought it sounded so dope so what was the what was the story there man that was do you have like you it seems to me that you have a little spiritual like you know you're a spiritual guy but i kind of talked to <laughs> i asked you that yesterday and you're like ah, not really yeah but bro you meditate you give gratitude you do these affirmations and you go on wild trips to alaska but um, i can also f- f- feel uh, how my body and the brain works you know yeah how how can i get how can i pursue my 100% potential you know how does the brain works how does your mind works and and how do you you give your mind the best um like the, the best like food yeah um, I, i get that so of it, course you know it, it could be like from one side you know spirituality is like that but i think you know i get what you're saying it's like there is and this is what i've always thought it's why i love quantum physics because there it seems to me that even within spirituality there is a science and a logic to it and so maybe you know that's it you know if you uh, act a certain way and treat your mind brain body a certain way these scientifically are the results that you're going to get maybe um i need to go on the exact same trip um that you did to alaska with the train The open, oh yeah what was what the deal with the train like an open top train yeah um so if you go to uh denali where you should definitely stay for a couple of days um and um you can do like hilly hiking up there so That's what I need. so you'll take like a helicopter they'll drop you off at a mountain top and you will hike all the way down and you know so much stuff to do um And you could even do like um, a, like a little private plane, and you would fly around like the Denali Mountain, which is like the tallest mountain in in, um, in the Northern America. Um, and then you can take the uh, the train, which is like a I think it's like eight hour train ride from Denali all the way down to um, Anchorage. And that is it has like an open top, so it's like a glass ceiling, like glass all the way around, like full panoramic view. They have a little bar, you get a drink. There's like an outside area where you can hang out while the train just crosses through. And it's you will both, you will see like uh, uh, brown bears, uh, you will see like moose, and you will see all this nature, all this, yeah, I, I was, it was just breathtaking. And that was just, that was just one day. I was there 10 days and it was like Mate. a new thing <laughs> every day, yeah. you know? Do you know what? I'm just thinking, we need to ask Bentley... <laughs> If they'll loan us a Bentayga and we could film some kind of like adventure show. Imagine me and you driving around Alaska in a Bentayga. 
And I know that, that wouldn't work out because we both want to drive it. You're just like, oh, no, it's my turn. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. We have one each. We have a little convoy. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we, yeah, exactly. We have a, a Bentayga and uh, a Continental, a yeah. GT, a, a, maybe not a convertible. Is it always cold in Alaska? <laughs> uh, the summer is pretty nice. Really? Yeah. When, okay. I was, when I was up there, it was like 60 or something. We're going the summer with a convertible and a yep. Bentayga. Best of both worlds, big and, and, and smaller. And we can just swap over. Let's do it. It's perfect. Let's do it. All right, mate. Emmett, make, make that happen. Um, dude, thanks so much. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure to work with you, uh, watch you create your art, go cruising around with you oh, in yeah. downtown that was and fun. doing this podcast. Um, we'll have to get you back on in a few months' time. Yeah, I'm down and, and, and I'm... I'm honored to to be here. Thank you for having having me. It, it was such a pleasure, and and I hope that we uh, get get to work on more in the future as well. We definitely will, mate. We yeah. definitely will. Okay, awesome. Okay. Job done.